Okay, so I'm watching uh, one of our friends, one of our mutual friends, Deconverted Man, has done me the honor of doing a response to my second video, um, mm -hmm. to the response to Godless Cranium. And I watched about 15 minutes of it so far, and I'm stopping to respond to what I've seen already. Um, I will finish it, and then I'll make a full response. But it's pretty good what I've seen so far. Um, he's actually grappling with the ideas as philosophy in a way that is non-defensive. Let's just have an interesting conversation on the subject. So I applaud him for that. Why I stopped to, why I stopped to make this so far is we're, we are somewhat talking past each other, and it could be my fault. So let me just clarify for him and anybody else. I don't know if Deconverted Man is an anti-theist. If he calls himself an anti-theist, I don't know. But an atheist says all atheism means is a lack of belief in God. Okay? If you are an atheist like Adam Friended, who is just an atheist, it's not an anti-theist. Now, I don't know where deconverted man's deconverted man stands. If you're an atheist like Adam Friended, or let's just assume deconverted man, just an atheist. He said, I'm avoiding the void, so what? If you're just an atheist, yeah, go for it. Avoid the void as long as you want. Why? Because it's not really that necessary. I had a conversation, for example, with Jen, this girl Jen from Twitter. Uh, nice girl, we chat a lot. She's a nurse in Oklahoma, I think. And she said, you know, David, Bo my, David Bowie, Mick Jagger, and Kurt Cobain are all atheists. I have all the meaning I need. Some some sort of variation on that. Now, we got into a dispute because I wasn't I wasn't I'm not quite convinced that David Bowie is an atheist. Um, if you're judging by his music, there's tons of references to God in his music. I'm gonna post Starman. Everyone should check it out. It's a great song. Uh, I'll post a couple other David Bowie songs too, just for the goof. Um, just for the goof. Just for laughs. Now, if she's not an anti-theist, I don't know how she labels herself. If she's not an anti-theist, that's fine. You get your meaning out of music, you know? You, you draw strength from music and that's your passion in life. That's totally legitimate. Again, you can avoid the void. The conversation that I started is to the anti-theist, not just the atheist. If, if all you are is an atheist and you're not an anti-theist, you can avoid the void. It's, and draw meaning from whatever you want in life. Why? Because you're perfectly content to live... To, Adam Friended is perfectly content to inhabit a world that was set up for him by religious He's Perfectly content. I think that's smart of him and quite wise. And he can derive meaning from whatever he wants. And if he wants to avoid the void, he's free to do it. You know, God bless him. Or nothing bless him. Knock yourself out, Adam. Go for it. You know? The anti-theist is a different matter. Why? Because they are making a forward, a forward-moving assertion. The anti-theist says either one of three things. One, religion sucks. Okay, if that's your, that's your claim, I agree with you up to a point. Let's talk about it. Let's have a conversation, shall we? You know? Let's just get together and we'll talk and feel and I'll listen to you and you'll... Give me bullshit, <laughs> you gave me bullshit Richard Dawkins talking points. No, but I'll listen to you. You can tell me, you know, it's just terrible. You know, Christians are so closed-minded. Like, oh, I, I feel your pain, man. Christians are so homophobic. I'm not trying to be, you know. Christians are so anti-science. Not me. Let's talk, bro. So I, I can have a conversation with a mild anti-theist. Maybe we'll come to some conclusions together, you know. You and me, we're in this together. Now we got another type of anti-theist. Religion really, really, really sucks. Okay, take it down a peg, cowboy. That's a little intense, you know. Maybe we're going to need a little bit more uh, interventionist means. Why don't you come to my church? Uh, I have a little special atheist room. No, no one's going to witness to you. Just come to my church and give me some hot chocolate. You sit in the corner, you know, people are just going to be nice to you for six hours. But my religion really, really sucks. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. I feel it. I feel it, man. I feel your intensity. Let's just take it down to earth a little. Everybody breathe. That's the second type of anti-theist. Here's the third type. Religion sucks so bad and it's so awful that it needs to be eradicated off the face of the earth. Now you got to deal with the void. 
Now you have to deal with the void and you can't avoid it. Why? Because you're making a forward assertion and you are actually trying to create a world without religion. So now you need to honestly grapple with what religion provides. Period. Full stop. No exceptions. I am not saying you, you can't avoid the void or you absolutely need to draw your meaning from the sources that I say. I'm saying if you eradicate religion, you need to grapple with some of the voices to the contrary. Why? Because they're powerful and they're convincing and they are speaking the truth. And some of them are atheists. I think Brett Weinstein is an atheist. And he says, we dismantle religion at our peril. We dismantle religion off of society at our peril. I'm pretty sure that's him. I could be, mis I could be ascribing the wrong quote. There's a couple of guys on the same page. But that's a concept that he would totally assent to. So would Jordan Peterson. That's the point. If you actually have as your conviction in life that religion is so bad that it needs to be eradicated or dismantled or taken off the face of the earth, now you have to deal with the void. Now you have to substantively deal with the, with the reality of what religion provides to both its individual adherence and to the society at large. Why do I have to? You don't if you don't want, if you don't want to have any intellectual integrity. If you want to have intellectual integrity and have a real conversation, yes, you do. Why? Because you're making a forward assertion about society as a whole. You, can't just, you, you can do that irresponsibly, but if you don't honestly grapple with what religion does in the positive, you're not having a real conversation and you are making a forward assertion about society as a whole irresponsibly in a way that is not very responsible. So, back to Jen. Jen! I don't know if you're an anti-theist. If you're an if you're an anti-theist, if you're not an anti-theist, you know, get as much meaning as you want from David Bowie. I strongly suggest, as I said, as I did on Twitter, you know, you listen to Hunky Dory because that's the best album. Then you listen to Rise and Fall of Ziggy Stardust. That's probably the second best. Then you listen to Aladdin Sane. Aladdin Sane is underrated. There's some really cool songs in Aladdin Sane. Cold fire. You've got everything but cold fire. You sing that to my wife all the time before we were married. Helped me win her heart. Helped seal the deal. She was like, wow, this guy's smooth, man. <laughs> this, guy, this guy's got mad skills. I was like, yeah, that's right, baby. That's right, all right. You know what I'm saying? So you can, oh, wait, and low. Not the second side. The second side is, pff, I can't, I've never even gotten through the second side. Brian Eno produced Artie, ugh. Oh, it drives you crazy. I've never gotten through it. Honestly, I've never listened to it all the way through. It's too, too annoying. But the first side's great. You got a... Don't you wonder some... There you go, right there. Remember we were discussing whether Bowie's an atheist. Don't you wonder sometimes about sound and vision. That sort of implies. Don't you wonder where inspiration comes from? That doesn't imply God. All right, whatever. Maybe it's just me. Blue, blue, electric blue, that's the color of my room where I will live. Yeah, I, I didn't sing that very well at all. No, I really didn't. All right, so that's the conversation thus far. Um, I don't know if you're an anti-theist deconverted man. We will talk about it at some point. And, but if you're not, you know, avoid the void. Whatever. If you're not, you can avoid the void. You know, we can have a philosophical, philosophical conversation about the source of music, but avoiding the, not grappling with the, with the void, with the lack of meaning in an individual person's life and the lack of social cohesion in society as a whole is only necessary if you are really, really, really committed anti-theist. Why? Because then you need to, if you want to have intellectual integrity, you need to really look at what religion actually is and grapple with it intensely. Other than that, no, pff, blow it off. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, Jen. Listen, to, if you're not an anti-theist, Jen, you know, listen to David Bowie and chill. <laughs> Take it, just relax. <laughs> you know? But if you are in a rabid anti-theist, then we got to talk and we got you got to do some listening. 
Because this, then the stuff that I'm talking about, meaning in people's lives, cohesion in society as a whole, then it's really, really, really important. Why? Because you are making a forward assertion about the type of world you want to live in. First of all, you should be providing evidence that once you dismantle religion, there should, that should be something other than a faith-based claim that religion's so bad that once you get rid of it, organically, secular humanism is the answer. How's, how is life going to become good for everybody? Secular humanism. Okay, now you need to define secular humanism. Why? Or you're, building a, a, you're not building a world correctly. Or you need to define what, what gives the individual strength. Why? Because he's going to be living in your world of tomorrow. You know, that's all. I, I don't know if that quite made sense as I wrapped it up. But anyways, amen. <laughs>